So I got this pretty cool Jeep back here. Do you guys recognize it? Well, you should because this is Martin Builds and this is him himself. Yeah. Hey, here I am. <laughs> so I invited myself over to his house. <laughs> and so, I said yes, of course. Yeah, he said yes. So we're going to show you his Jeep. This thing is awesome. It has a ton of mods. And honestly, I think it looks sick. This is a lower Jeep. So let me go ahead and show you. So as you can tell, this thing is like pretty immaculate, man. The paint is still good. It has SRT replica wheels, right? That's correct. Yeah, and then the hood scoop up top, that's actually functional. Man, this thing is clean. There's so much more in this Jeep that we're gonna show you, but like even the grill, man, honeycomb in the front, like that is sick. What year is this Jeep? So it's an 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee yeah. Limited. It is a uh, equipped with the 4.7, non-ho non-ho and is it the quadra drive or no yes so as soon as it senses the back tire spinning faster than the fronts it automatically kicks in the front tires and you have done a lot to this engine so like what are some of the things that you've done to it i started with the ho cams the solid latch adjusters and then i went to the 08 camshafts i've also got the 08 intake manifold and it has a 75 millimeter throttle body that is from the 454 Chevrolet engine. Uh, what did they call it? The Vortec engine, I believe Vortec, it was. Vortec, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I took one, uh, throttle body off of that, made an adapter. That's a junkyard part, right? That yep, you get a junkyard. junkyard. Yep, yeah. as a matter of fact, I was walking out of pick a part after not finding anything that day. <laughs> and that throttle body was sitting on the tailgate of a Chevy truck. Yeah. And I picked it up and excited been thinking about other throttle bodies. And the reason you needed that is because, I mean, you have a cam in there, do you have the injector right. upgrade? Another thing too, my theory was that the newer 4.7, the 08 newer, has a 74 millimeter throttle body on it already from the factory. Oh, okay. So I'm like, why shouldn't I have at least a 74, if not a 75? Yeah, and the crazy part is, tell them your gas mileage, man. I don't believe it, but... Well, what, I, what it says on the <laughs> um, display. Yeah, on the, on the you know, display, yeah. It, it's probably lying to me a little bit, but it, it's like 24.3 or 24.4, something like that. Is that from highway driving or street driving? Now, that's going to be a little bit of combination because now I am commuting a little bit. How long ago did you buy the Jeep? It's got to be at least six years now. Wow, you've had it for six years? Yeah. And what made you go with the lowered look instead of a lifted look that most people go for on these WJs? Well, I love those SRT wheels. Yeah. And as soon as you put those on there, you're gonna end up with this gap, especially if you're, you're gonna probably go with a little bit lower profile tire. And Especially because they're 20s, right? Right, and these tires are actually um, a hair bit actually taller than the factory wheels. So you end up with a pretty good gap between the top of the tire and the top of the fender, and it did not look good. <laughs> it, it, it just screaming, lower me, lower me. What did you use to lower it? This has got the one inch lowering kit from iBox. So they're lowering springs. Yeah. So it's one inch in the front, 1.3 in the back. And you also made some custom control arms, right? Yes. So I went with an adjustable uh, control arm, the lower ones in the rear. Well, actually, then I actually did a custom one on the top. I used uh, like a Johnny joint. Oh, style. yeah, yeah. And I see you have upgraded brakes. Yeah, slotted and drilled yeah. rotors. They're just the factory sizes yeah. as far as that goes right now. I actually do have an idea for larger <laughs> disc brakes on the front. Ooh, yeah, I like the grill. So what did you do here? You have to do this with an 04 grill. Yeah. Because it actually has multiple pieces where the earlier grills were like all. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, piece. it's all in one piece. Right. So it only works with the 04 grill. The ones from the limited and the special edition will work. You can just buy this honeycomb yeah. piece here. It's like maybe around $40 or so. You can and buy them off Amazon or exactly. eBay. Exactly, yeah. Amazon, eBay, both have them. Yeah. Plastic welded a lot of it in and some JB Weld as well. JB Weld. Yeah. And what made you go with the tinted headlights? Um, just because the Jeep is all black? Yeah. Yeah. Just keep them murdered out. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's from the rear, what you got to match the front. LEDs here as well. Yeah. You got the LED third brake light too. Yes, I do. Yeah. I actually have these on my website if you guys want to pick them up. <laughs> But he also has a fourth brake light. Yes. <laughs> so if you stand behind it and then press the brakes, you can let me get a better angle. But all those little holes are actually lights. 
so that people can actually see you and he, down here too he has a set that's nice man how did you end up doing that just drill holes that was a lot of work um because it is on that v do a little bit of filing yeah to get it flat and get a start and i think there were a lot of uh i think there were five 16 inch holes there's an led that lines up it's one of those just the a LED strip strips. a strip yeah, yeah one hole every three quarters of an inch okay. and then after i drilled all those holes i took a round file yeah and actually filed each oh hole by hand by hand yeah wow look really good and then there's just a single wire that runs down and through here okay and, oh yeah and it catches your third brake light no. the wire all the oh the down wire here. down here okay yeah, yeah you're right you're so right got, dang it's so clean in here too man you even got the the little cd box huh yeah 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 it, and it just becomes a storage thing for oh me. yeah it's a storage now yeah that's how mine is too oh yeah i wanted to ask about this so you have the tank tuck but what i like about yours is the hoses they're not exposed a lot of people run them like right. through here how did you do that? Well, uh, you do end up drilling a hole through the frame. Oh, okay, through the frame. Yeah, and then I ended up cutting a piece of dry shaft <laughs> yeah. out of pick apart. I think it was on a ZJ, <laughs> I believe it was, uh, like a five inch piece yeah. of dry shaft. And I ran that through oh, the frame and yeah. it back in solid. Yeah. So in my opinion, the frame is actually stronger now stronger. than it was yeah. before. So one thing that I did see on the car, which I've never seen before, and I have to show everybody here. So if you look at this seat, I've never seen a seat with the lumbar switch. So yeah you can see the seat moving that is crazy i've never seen that before <laughs> let me know if you guys have seen this in in your jeep if you have it like that is crazy to me i've never seen that so i guess now that we're here let's move into the interior i mean look at these seats amazing and then door cards as well like super clean with the chrome handles so is this like the overland edition or what is this no this would be the uh limited limited but, okay yeah. Cause it's got the wood the wood grain, grain look. yeah personally i do like the uh the one that looks more like carbon fiber i wish it yeah. would be an easy switch Spot. But no you have to not. replace everything yeah, yeah. like and the whole dash exactly yeah dash would literally have to come out to yeah fix that so in here i mean you have a bunch of goodies what is this right here the super chips what does that do well it is a programmer even though in my opinion it doesn't make any difference if it's on factory or tow oh, or performance okay. i cannot physically tell the difference yeah so i have it on stock for, for me it's a bunch of fancy gauges <laughs> that you do not get down here in the dash yeah right. so what is this up here now there's my wide band air fuel ratio gauge okay they did not make a single pod yeah so i made one and it looks stock it looks factory yeah it, it, i got it in a position where it doesn't block any of the other gauges yeah it's a great spot and then i also see something up there okay that's my uh backup <laughs> sensor and let me show you the sensors because these look factory man martin you do great work on your jeep man thank you check that out so these are the sensors these are aftermarket right yes and they look like they're factory man yeah you can buy the whole kit for like under twenty dollars and you were saying that the engine temperature on the stock gauge compared to this one might be off it seems like um once you reach 210 degrees or around that area yeah. on your factory gauge I, i'm saying if it's a hot day you're running kind of hard or up a hill and it says 212 i would not believe that because <laughs> this thing has told me i changed the cooling fan i got up to 232 degrees i look over here at this gauge it looks like it's saying 212 degrees oh wow so and it's all connected to the same system i mean this connects to the jeep down there sure so that's that's not good no <laughs> that's not I good see. well let's go on to the rear seats because you have some interesting stuff back here so on the driver's side here you open this up and you got a a box here that you usually don't have and on your side what is that uh, here's your uh power distribution block that would yeah. be underneath the hood yeah all your fuses and all that all fuses, right there right there and then the battery's in here right. which is crazy that's a great location out of the way too right it doesn't get in the way at all so the reason you have this is let's show them the engine okay and uh, i mean bro the rear is super clean the whole jeep is clean man this is awesome this dude's trying to fly the plane <laughs> mustang hood right here i mean uh from the mustang right there yeah i think that's from the 05 through 09 i believe oh wow yeah and then you just cut it out pretty much yeah and then right here you fitted it with like foam padding correct yeah so it's got a nice seal all the way around 
Yeah, and this is the stock uh, airbox. Yeah, so you're looking at what would have been the bottom side of the original airbox that sat right here. Oh, okay. So after I cut it up, yeah. I flipped it over this way, and then your stock silencer, yeah. or resonator, is that another name for them? I cut it, cut into it. So remove the filter. Oh, okay. So this is the piece that was attached to the throttle body, right? This yeah. bottom piece, or no? Yes, that silencer resonator. Yeah. And then I just used this piece right here from the stock uh, yeah. airbox. That holds the filter in. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you just this. cut this open too. Does your Jeep do that? No. Mine does that. Is that the blend doors? Yeah. And then you have polished uh, intake right there. What is that called? Yeah, throttle the, body? The throttle body. Wow, that yeah. thing looks crazy, man. And then your cold air intake temp sensor is oh, right yeah. there. You have the polished uh, valve covers. Yep, those are the uh, factory magnesium ones. Did you polish them? I did. Oh, oh man. A lot of hours. I would yeah. say around 20, 25 hours for what each What the one. heck? No way. Yeah, I do have a pretty decent video on that. And uh, I also have one that will show you the hazards. Of the hazard. polishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, you got to remember this is magnesium and it is flammable. You have some headers? Yeah. Doug the, Thorley? The, the Doug Thorley tri -Y headers. Okay. Those are the ceramic coated. Yeah. Is this an upgraded Open, alternator? Yeah. Um, it's a 160 amp one? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. 160 amp. From alternator. a Durango, right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. From a Durango. From a Durango. And then you have the ZJ fan, right? Yep. This is from only came in a 98 with the 5.9. The 5.9. And there's less than 15,000 of those yeah. ever made. So finding one of these fans. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, good luck. I've only found two ever. Wow. Is this a stock radiator? Stock radiator. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you notice this engine, there is a ton of room in here. I mean, one being the fan but also like the battery was relocated to the rear seat. So you got a lot of room there. Yeah, and then the power distribution. The power distribution, moved. yeah. And then the air box, it's up here now. Right. And on this side, there's wire tug, man. So it all goes behind here and through the fender and out of like behind the tail, I mean, yeah. behind the headlight, right? Th that was the wires that went down this side of the wheel yeah. well. And then all the wires that came across the valve cover yeah. are actually under the intake manifold. Oh, okay. And then coming out through those like holes through the cylinder heads yeah those like cavities that they have that looks so clean man thank you i mean it's all hidden let me show you the other side so you guys can see what it looks like normally yeah, which is this it looks like a big old mess of wires huh right and <laughs> this is still going to get done the tcm is going to get relocated to actually underneath the uh, vehicle, uh, kind of next to the transfer case. Oh, okay. I've yeah. already made a mount for it. All these wires will also go underneath the intake manifold and any wires that go to the T uh, ECM yeah. are gonna come up into the cowl. Into the cowl up here. Yeah. yeah. That is so cool, man. And you're gonna build a custom coolant, yeah, right? So Reservoir? Build a, uh, kind of learning how to TIG weld. Yeah. So I wanna build a custom one that sits right up in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, man, you're, you're doing a good job already, so. Thank I you. can't wait to see where this ends up. I mean, there's no dirt in here. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and Martinville also has this sick XJ on 35s. I mean, this thing is nice. Everything is like, he makes it himself. Like he made that intake. I mean, Thor Industries, I believe is the name, sells them. This thing has a hydraulic power steering uh, setup, which is crazy. He says he recommends upgrading the injectors. These are from a Ford Focus or something like that. But I mean, this thing on 35s with 456 gears gets 70 miles per gallon. I'm on 33s with the same gear and I get 10 miles per gallon. And of course it's Martin Bill. So this thing is clean as well. What do you guys think? This or the Lord WJ? I think the Lord WJ to be honest. So we're gonna take it for a little spin. See how it does, man. With all these mods that you have on it. I'm excited, honestly. My, <laughs> my Jeep is super slow. <laughs> so let's see how she does. He's redlining it too. <laughs> gonna grip it's gonna grip and go yeah that feels good and since you have the upgraded cam it allows it to rev 
into the red line, huh? Yeah, um, it's odd. At one time, it used to let me do that, and now this thing is not letting me take it past into the red. Okay. I, I don't know what the deal is there. All right, so there you have it. I mean, this Jeep is amazing, full of a lot of goodies. Thank you, Martin, for letting me come out here and record the Jeep and uh, meeting you. Like, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, Thank you man. for coming out. Hopefully we come back out again, but in my Jeep. And so we can see like the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be that. cool, man. All right, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs>